Hello everyone and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is scale and harmonize your business inventory with inventory visibility. My name is Tim and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you are agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the session and in a live Q&A segment with remaining time after the presentation. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Yufi Huang, Senior Program Manager, and Ji Qing Xia, Software Engineer, along with Hira Nick, Senior Solution Architect. Yufi, over to you. Thank you, team, for the warm introduction. And welcome again, everyone, to join our live session. Um, we will first give you an overview of inventory visibility product and then a deep dive into a few key features. And then we will have the introdu introduction of the technical architecture and the scalability and the performance aspects of inventory visibility microservice. And during the process, as team said, if you have any questions, feel free to post it into the Q&A panel. And nowadays, due to the customer's buying habit and emerging technology change, more and more companies are operating sales activities on multiple channels and manage inventories across several ERPs. This can gradually cause big problems to the business if not managed well. And have you ever encountered inventory visibility challenges in your organization that making accurate replenishment plans are difficult because the on hand and demand stock information are not most up to date? And as chief operation officer, you have regular sales and operations meeting and want to discuss strategic changes based on inventory overview across all regions and legal entities. However, it always takes a long time to obtain and consolidate the full data. And as a sales director, you want to save limited stock of a popular product to your most important sales channels and customers, but you don't have a good way to protect those cross-channel stocks. And as a store manager, you're always trying your best to fulfill your customers' demands with not just your own store's availability, but also nearby stores. But due to lack of real-time inventory information, oversell over promising often happen, which may lead to sales opportunity lost or low customer loyalty. And as a chief technology officer, your organization is not only operating on several sales channels, but you also manage your warehouses, your inventories, maybe in different ERPs. It is a challenge to find a single platform that can unify inventory information across different platforms without disturbing your daily business operation. In inventory visibility is a web API based microservice that can be used as an add in to your ERP or order systems as a surrounded product that is targeting all the above challenges and is evolving continuously continuously looking to address more customer business pain points. And first, you can obtain a global view of real-time inventory visibility across all your channels, your data source systems, and all your geographical regions. And you can also have instant and accurate response of inventory availability to all your order fulfillment queries. You can leverage the soft reservation and our omnichannel ATP functions to avoid overpromising. And in order to protect or let's say ring fence your popular product stocks to either your most important channels or corporate customer groups or, or even individual uh, big customer accounts and having visibility into the consumption of the allocation, consider using the inventory allocation capability. And moreover, inventory visibility microservice is highly scalable and extensible. It can grow as your business 
For example, if it is an acquisition of a new company, you want to merge the inventory data soon, or you want to unify the inventory data from your extended warehouse to the new uh, platforms, or you can rely on us to provide the inventory visibility efficiently throughout your business and technical landscape. And going forward, we will also add a few more important directions, uh, such as the integration with supply and demand planning tools to bring in the forecasted inventory results so that the mitigation plans like replenishment decisions or when to do inventory transfers can be made on time with reference to those results. And we would also like to start the journey of the sustainable supply chain transformation, tracking inventory carbon emissions, for example, uh, from procurement to pay or order to cash um, process. And in addition, we would like to incorporate business collaborations, such as integration with teams into inventory visibility service, so that real-time notification and inventory alerts can be posted directly to your team's channel for immediate attention and actions. We will also embed collaboration tools in inventory visibility power app for direct discussion with your coworkers, just in case some um, you'd like to discuss some issue upon viewing the inventory data. All right, and here is a video demonstrating how to ensure a successful and smooth new product launch with the help of the inventory visibility adding. An accurate view of your inventory is key to many decisions that you make as a company. But it is more and more challenging to get timely, correct data drawn from storage locations, sales channels, and a variety of source data systems. Sometimes, salespeople struggle to act promptly against inventory allocations for their most important customers and channels and therefore may lose opportunities. Visibility into your inventory status is the basis for replenishment decisions, fulfillment strategies, and even the financial status of the company. Yet nearly every activity related to your supply chain can affect inventory at some point in time. Microsoft Dynamics 365 Inventory Visibility Service is designed to tackle all of these problems and provides you with a holistic and seamless view into your inventory status with enhanced monitoring capabilities. You can track in real time the on-hand demand and physical consumption quantities of your stock. Get alerted to products with critical inventory statuses. Compare the consumption of inventory against what's left in the allocation pool and deep dive into individual product inventory details when needed. You can also view the supply breakdown per product, including actual on-hand inventory and incoming purchase quantities. You can slice and dice your demand values by confirmed reservations and open sales orders. And you can compare total supply and demand per product to give you insight into whether you have the right stock balance. Kate, the Regional Product Release Manager of New York, has been busy planning the launch of a healthy beverage to the market in two weeks. Based on a planning and demand simulation result from her company's planning system, Kate allocates 20,000 units to the store channel. She also allocates 40,000 units to e-commerce channels and keeps 20,000 units in the central warehouse as a common pool which can be distributed to any channels if needed. The allocated quantities are then cascaded to lower hierarchies by channel sales manager Kevin. Prior to the official launch day, the company's online channels open for pre-order. Linda is a lifestyle influencer and a huge fan of the beverage brand. Due to her excitement, she pre-ordered 100 cans online on their branded website. This instantly triggered inventory visibility service to soft reserve the ordered quantity and update the available for reservation quantity. The successful soft reservation is then referenced on a sales order created in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management, which will then trigger warehouse and shipment related activities so that Linda and other customers can receive their orders on time. Meanwhile, Channel Sales Manager Kevin and Inventory Manager Kai can easily monitor the sales consumption and stock levels in real time via the Inventory Visibility Services Dashboard. 
it doesn't take long for Kevin to receive an alert indicating their branded website is the most popular sales channel and the stock will reach its minimum allocated stock levels before the official launch day. To mitigate this issue early, Kevin sets up a Teams meeting with Kate and Kai to discuss, and they decide to transfer 8,000 units from the central warehouse to the branded website's local warehouse for stock replenishment. When the launch day finally arrives, customers flooded into local and online stores with thousands of transactions, flowing into inventory visibility service, which always updates to reflect the latest inventory within a second. The product launch was a success, and customers are happy with their on-time deliveries, thanks to Microsoft Dynamics 365 Inventory Visibility Service. For more information, please visit our website or contact your Microsoft sales representative. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and now let's have a deep dive into the feature mentioned in the video. And the current features of inventory visibility are mostly applied to retail and commerce customers. We also have uh, manufacturing customers who wish to have cross-platform inventory visibility um, as well. Um, they're also leveraging us and um, they're also field service customers adopting inventory visibility to provide the critical parts availability. And just to share some use cases combining with our feature capabilities. And um, showing you a brief example here, let's say you have dynamic um, 365 supply chain management as your ERP. And actually, you may also have other ERPs as well, but I'm using dynamics 365 SCM as an example. And then this is the system which manages your master data, your organization information, as well as your warehouses and inventories, and which also does the logistics process of an order processing. And then you have um, external order engines or order channels. Let's say in this example, you got two channels. One is your e-commerce channel with access to the mobile app. The other is the physical store channel. And then let's say the initial on hand information, of course, it is it comes from the dynamics uh, SCM. It said, let's say it's 100. And then this in, then there is a first order being placed by the e-commerce channel asking for 10 quantities. Of course, you can go ahead and proceed it because there's really enough quantity. So after after this order is being placed, um, the normal process would be the order will be synchronized to the ERP system to do the logistics processing. However, normally the latency would be expected during the order sync. Let's say during this interval, another sales order B comes in asking for 91 quantities from the store, then the store manager may just go ahead and promise this order to the customer or even confirm the order to the customer because if you're always relying on your backend ERP to provide the information um, because the first order has not been synced yet into the ERP, the on hand will always tell you they are um, there are 100 left to consume. Hence, there's a risk of overbooking. Then how do you optimize the entire flow? To solve the problem. Let's see how inventory visibility can play a part in this similar scenario. So this is a very uh, almost the same flow as previous one, but introducing inventory visibility in between. Same example, initial on hand is 100 and first order asks for 10 quantities and then instantly trigger a soft reservation request into inventory visibility asking to soft reserve 10, which inventory visibility service will process saying that successful reserve 10. And then this will also update the available for, actually this is available for soft reservation calculated measure to 90. And then the second sales order comes in asking for 91 quantities of course, same will process into inventory visibility service. We will this this time the soft reservation request will fail because there's not enough quantity. And this is how we could 
uh, let's say minimize the overbooking information um, to the to 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 the most level by leveraging inventory visibility in between. And what is the rest of the process upon the successful soft reservation? So upon the instant um, soft reservation request being processed being processed su successfully in inventory visibility, we will return your your uh, return to the original caller system with a soft reservation. ID associate back to um, the original caller and then you can associate this soft reservation ID back to the sales lines within your sales order. So basically the soft reservation request actually it associates to individual feature lines, sorry individual order lines, but to simplify the scenario we only have one line within one order. So anyway you attach the soft reservation ID with your sales order line and then you would synchronize the entire order that all being soft reserved or being uh, already have that soft reservation request ID input there into your backend ERP system to do the rest of the work and then upon um, either the physical reservation, let's say it's the hard reservation or upon if you directly release to the warehouse, uh, you have the flexibility to set at which point once it's being hard booked in your um, ERP system, you could decide to um, do the offset to trigger the offset process. So the offset of the soft reservation will be synchronized back into inventory visibility service together with the regular, regular inventory uh, summary sync by default from this supply chain management system. And this will offset the soft reserve quantity, for example, um, using sales order A as an example, back to zero. And also because it's already being hard reserved in ERP, the available for uh, available physical information will also be updated back into IV um, to 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 basically to reconcile this soft reservation offset. This is how we make everything let's say the inventory quantities are uh, reconciled to each other and make sure that at any time, whether before the order sync being successful uh, or after the order sync, um, you would always have the correct available for soft reservation number in your system, uh, in inventory visibility service. And then, um, what we're currently working on is uh, we're going to also build an out of box soft reservation trigger from the Dynamics uh, 365 supply chain sales orders so that you don't have to customize or build or your own route to make this one work. This is targeting the um, the customers who who are actually using um, who are actually directly creating sales orders as well in dynamic 3C5 supply chain management. For example, if you have uh, another channel as call center, then the call center um, um, that the call center um, workers may directly create the orders in. Dynamics SCM. In this sense, you also want to refer to inventory visibility service for the actual available for reservation information that hence doing the soft reservation. All right, and an Apart from this soft reservation capability, the most common or let's say frequently used feature is to use the on-hand query or on-hand change within inventory visibility service. So we would always update you because we harmonize, we are capable of harmonize the inventory information across different platforms, then it is very common for the customers to use inventory visibility, uh, adding microservice to uh, query the, to do the inventory on hand query or directly post some inventory changes, inventory adjustment into inventory visibility service. And then by leveraging this kind of inventory um, summary snapshot in inventory visibility service, you could use it to, for example, build your your Power BI report or your own custom report, and also you can always support the query um, into IVs or inventory visibility service um, from your other external systems as well. As for the um, product positioning, I would say for almost for all enterprises, large and small, as long as you have this omni-channel ch orders or let's say if it's not a retail scenario, but you have this, your inventory scattered across different platforms um, outside of 
happening outside of your core ERP, if you want a, let's say, close to real time inventory visibility and a elevated ERP performance, you could consider combining your ISVs plus inventory visibility plus your ERP system. In this case, the Dynamics 365 supply chain management altogether. OK, and moving on to the next highlight features is called inventory allocation. And um, nowadays, due to the natural disasters and other unexpected accidents, the supply chains are frequently disrupted and making the goods movement slower on the chain. And it is becoming more and more important on maximizing your limited on hand stock to the best usage. And you would like to avoid the situation that one customer placed a bulk order in one channel that leaves the other channels very few or no stock to promise to the other customers. Therefore, being able to pre-allocate your limited or popular stocks to your most important customers or channels or groups, and then in our terminology, we actually call it the allocation groups, it, it is a good way to mitigate your supply chain crisis and optimize your network's inventory levels. And we allow you to freely define allocation groups, which can be the channels, as said before, customers, or whatever criteria you set to receive the allocation. And different from the soft reservation, because the soft reservation normally associates with the sales activity or sales transaction, but the inventory allocation, um, it happens before the actual sales activity. So it is one step um, before. So you would allocate first and then you would soft reserve within the allocation. Um, but just to say you have the flexibility to um, use those two features separately as well. And we would allow you to allocate in a hierarchical way and to define freely your own allocation group structure. For example, this company is selling the ice cream makers and the initial on hand stock is 20,000 quantities. And we would inventory visibility service, uh, of course, based on your free defined um, calculation measure of how you would calculate the available to allocate quantities, but by no means it would refer to your original on hand and making it a virtual common pool. Let's say now your available to allocate is also 20,000 and then you would allocate 15,000 out of this 20,000 to your sales channels and your distribution center. And then this makes you have still have another 5,000 quantities left in this virtual common pool for further allocation or direct consumption from the other um, non-prioritized um, allocation groups. And then on top of this web store, um, you, you have two accounts, uh, alpha and beta, where you proceed to allocate hierarchically. And same thing happens for distribution center. And if you, if you want, you can continue cascading the allocation to the lower levels, for example, region, or uh, if you have other allocation um, hierarchy defined, you can continue doing that. And we would then also track after the allocation, it would be the actual consumption. The consumption can either be via the soft reservation or via the physical consumption of your inventory, for example, upon the shipment of the inventory. So um, it is again up to you to either post the soft reservation quantities or post the physical consumption quantities into the allocated pool, which will automatically deduct it, the quantity from the allocated pool. So th this is how we actually protect the ring fence your allocation um, because we would deduct in real time as well so that um, Next time, when a new allocate, uh, when a new uh, consumption request is being posted into the allocation, it can only consume what's left in the already allocated pool. Okay, and besides soft reservation and the allocation, we also have this available to promise feature. Um, in ATP, we actually we support to define the formulas that combine your inventory supply and demand from multiple data sources. So let me zoom in for you to have a view. This is a sample uh, 
ATP formula within IV. As you can see, it, the difference from your single ERP ATP is we allow you to freely define cross data source um, calculation measures to, to see what actually makes sense to calculate your ERP, oh, sorry, to calculate your ATP, okay? And then we currently support the time fence of up to seven days, and we will support much longer period as um, it is, this is already planned on our roadmap, um, because nowadays we see the supply chain has been dragged into uh, much, let's say much longer, and the, uh, the goods movement is getting slower due to virus disruptions and due to various supply chain disruptions. That's why it is important for us to be able to um, to be able to um, provide the longer ATP time fence to support your, uh, for example, your inquiry of uh, when or what day the the um, the inventory will become available. Based on this, you can calculate your, uh, let's say, your um, estimate your um, shipment date, or you could query if something is out of stock, you could always obtain the next available dates quickly too. All right, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jia Cheng and to give you the technical briefing on our product architecture and performance. Off to you, Jia Cheng. Okay, yeah, Chang, you're on mute. There you go. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Yufei, for the introduction of inventory visibility, uh, both its use cases and feature coverages. Uh, I'm Jia Chang Xia. I'm a software engineer in the inventory visibility service team in Microsoft. Uh, I'll take over the rest of the session. Let's begin with an architectural view of inventory visibility. This figure illustrates the inventory visibility architecture. At the center, we have the inventory visibility service, which is an HTTP-based microservice where we expose various APIs corresponding to different features that you say introduced just now. You may connect multiple ERP-like system to inventory visibility service. For example, we provide a built-in integration from Dynamic 365 supply chain management with a batch job where the dynamic 365 supply chain management periodically calls the APIs provided by inventory visibility service. Likewise, inventory visibility service can be connected to other systems with inventory information, including a third party ERP system, a vendor solution with inventory info, a web shop system, etc. Inventory data from different systems are gathered in inventory visibility service to achieve a cross data source inventory management. So inventory visibility service is built to sync with Power Platform and Dataverse on the right hand side. The Power App solution provides two features. One is a user interface for inventory visibility, where we use the inventory visibility service as a typical Power Apps application making queries, changes, and most importantly, uh, use the Power Apps page to adjust inventory visibility service configuration and system settings. Another is that inventory visibility service stores useful information into dataverse tables, and it is possible to build customized solutions on top of that. For example, using the Power Automate to build alert events or Power BI for visualizations. Let's use an example of Dynamic 365 supply chain management to illustrate how a data change in your ERP system connected with inventory visibility service propagates its changes. On the center of inventory visibility, we have a high performance in-memory cache to store the data in memory. Think of a change in dynamic 365 supply chain management, whether it is an order, an inventory journal, or a customized activity. The change is captured by dynamic 365, marking it as being sent to inventory visibility. 
and there is a recurrent batch job that periodically pushes such quantity to inventory visibility. And inventory visibility in this way will always have the uh, almost up to date inventory data from Dynamic 365 Supply Chain Management. And similar implementation can be done in other systems as well. At the end, or at the back of inventory visibility, we use Dataverse as permanent storage for fault tolerance purposes. So now we're illustrating more from what happens in a dynamic 365 is matched to um, inventory visibility. In dynamic 365, we have the activities that changes the inventory quantity. So one type is to change the inventory on hand by a specific value like making a sales order to deduct the inventory quantity or to make a production order to increase the inventory quantity. In both way, in inventory visibility, it is called an on-hand change event, which does uh, the things, for example, please add 10 more quantities for my item, for my product item A. And in Dynamic 365, there is also ways to override the existing inventory on hand like to post the counting journal or to make quantity adjustments from the on hand inventory on hand forms and in inventory visibility we also have another api to post the inventory on hand sum meaning that regardless of the current numerical value of the quantities uh, override all these values with the new values specified. In fact, for all the changes from Dynamic 365 to inventory visibility, we always use the overriding strategy, but it is up to the uh, up to the user's choice when they integrate inventory visibility with third-party applications. In Dynamic 365, we can also view on hand or uh, by the on-hand form or the on-hand report. In inventory visibility, such a feature is wrapped by an API called on-hand index query, where we can not only see the data from Dynamic 365 Supply Chain Management, but can also see the data from different systems denoted under different data sources. There are features in Dynamic 365, where we do not find an exact match of uh, inventory visibility with minor adjustments. For example, the soft reservation, uh, the soft reservation in inventory, vis in inventory visibility service uh, works a little bit different compared to the uh, reserve order or reserve physical functionalities inside of Dynamic 365, which we will cover the details in a future tech talk. And uh, as for ATP, the, we have the plan of extending the available to promise calculation to a longer period than the currently supporting dynamic fixed files. And for allocation, we do not yet find a exact match of feature inside of dynamic fixed five supply chain management. And as for connections to the power platform or dataverse, Dynamic 365 use what we call dual write, uh, which is not the way it works in inventory visibility. Inventory visibility, um, as it is a, uh, it uses dataverse from the back end, can also do the equivalent things of writing specific tables, tables to a dataverse uh, or to an old data object. For instance, we have a feature which we are releasing soon called a uh, query preloading, which just stores the uh, predefined query results into a dataverse table for users extraction directly. With the architectural level concepts introduced, 
let us now go one step further into the in-memory caching part. We'd like to show how we design the cache to assure uh, inventory visibilities, scalability, and performance. So inventory visibility groups data by cache partitions. The cache partitions are under multiple cache instances. A cache partition is the minimal unit of data storage. And currently it is modeled to map a specific warehouse or retail store. As the user's business grow, the data uh, may occur from different warehouses or retail stores. And we place multiple cache partitions into different cache instances for better scalability and load balancing. The scalability is ensured by extending more cache partitions, by extending more cache instances when needed. So cache instance, we can view it as a virtual machine on the Azure cloud. So when an inventory visibility user has the needs to extend their business and introducing more data, we can always extend more cache instance on the cloud to ensure the scalability. And besides, we also have multiple uh, query instances to handle the request in parallel. When a new query request arrives, the request is first passed into a partition based request. For example, you may be querying the data from site one warehouse one and site one warehouse two in a same time, putting them into one request. What the query instance will do is that to split the request into two partition based requests and match them to different cache partitions. The cache partition will do the computation logic and returns partition based responses that will later be aggregated into one single response. So by making this query, you can actually see the results from different warehouses at the same time. And it handles the logic of different partitions in parallel for optimized performances. And here are some results for the, from the users that has already go live with inventory visibility service. On the user that has already go live, we received a report of making more than 1 million API calls per day. So the calls can be either a quantity change API or a quantity query API uh, at its peak time. And for the setup stage, we received a report of syncing uh, over 6 million records per hour at the initial syncing for dynamic 365 supply chain management's current data to inventory visibility. And from the user's use story, one user onboarded from 300 stores post machine at the initial phase, and over the time period of one year and a half, they grows the support of inventory visibility to over 5 thousand retail stores. And on average from our monitor logs, we have less than 200 millisecond processing time inside inventory visibility. While the actual performance can vary due to the network availability of your geolocation and the data pattern that you put into inventory visibility. Despite its good performance in general, we do have some best practice suggestions for inventory visibility. Firstly, despite the partitions are good to handle individual requests, requesting too many partitions at one time degrades the response time. As we need to so-called uh, deserialize the responses or to reassemble them into one single response. This can degrade your performance by introducing an unwanted extra delay. As a best practice, for example, when you are querying 100 warehouses on-hand data at the same time, 
we always suggest you to post 100 individual requests and specifying one warehouse in each of the requests by uh, instead of doing a very large request, putting 100 warehouses in the same request. And besides, there are features which we make optional as per user's decision to enable them or not. You can find the features inside the user interface uh, feature management page. We suggest to disable the unnecessary ones when you don't need them. Some of them simplifies the code execution logics, for example, the WMS related features. So feel free to close them if you uh, if the items in your Dynamic 365 is not uh, under warehouse management module. Well, other features can reduce the Dataverse loads, such as the background services we are providing in the feature management page. And as a quick view of the future feature roadmap, uh, we are fitting more uh, different data patterns as an ongoing work. As the current design, we only support splitting the data by warehouse or inventory locations. In the future, we support to split them by product IDs or by both product IDs and cash partitions. This can be extremely useful in terms of, in terms of both business perspective and performance perspective. From a performance perspective, it allows us to distribute data based on different patterns which will benefit the, benefit the users uh, with a central distribution warehouse where the majority of quantity changes take place in a same warehouse. And from the business perspective, a potential use case is to uh, make a sub reservation in a shopping cart without spe specifying a site or warehouse info when it's actually not needed. So that's the performance and scalability part. Now I take two minutes uh, to have a quick introduce on what's coming next in the upcoming Tech Talk series. There are different topics we are providing to better introduce inventory visibility. Today, Yufei and I had an overview of inventory visibility in general. Hope that you enjoyed it. In the coming sessions, where there are several other parts. First is the illustration of how inventory visibility was integrated integrates with Dynamic 365 supply chain management. We will go through the data flow as well as providing some uh, suggestions on in case you want to do some um, customizations to, to achieve certain logics. And besides, we have the feature details to introduce you the individual features and how they work together to meet with different, uh, to meet with our needs. So it generally covers what we introduced today and the support for uh, WMS items. Sorry, the warehouse management uh, items. Next, we share some integration ideas and best practices. You see some typical scenarios integrated by inventory visibility and some of the uh, user stories if possible. And lastly, we have one ask me anything session for live chats and Yammer frequently asked questions, answers. So that's the major contents for today's Tech Talk session. Let us spend a few minutes uh, to read uh, questions from the Q&A channel. Thanks, Jai Cheng. I think we do have a couple of more questions. Uh, so the first question I will read is, is it possible to shorten the one minute batch sync? from Dynamics 365 to inventory visibility? Um, uh, I, yeah, please. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was saying that I, I could answer this question. So currently we offer this standard, uh, let's say one minute batch drop thing, sync from FNO, or oh, sorry, from Dynamics 365 supply chain management to inventory visibility. Um, it actually caters to most of a customer 
needs is a balance of the performance of the ERP system and the cost of because um, I, I will try to address the second question, which refers to the API limit as well. But basically it is um, the more API calls you make to IV, of course, it may uh, because the platform actually has an API limit. So this is this one minute batch job sync is a balance between the performance as well as the maybe the cost that you may want to consider as well. However, um, normally if you want a very real time inventory update, you may want to separate uh, separate your, um, let's say inbound inventory management comparing to your outbound inventory changes. So as in the previous example stated, you could post more real time, let's say your outbound inventory or inventory demand directly into IV and which will of course update the inventory changes directly and then leaving your inbound so your in inventory supplies uh, managed by your ERP system which the batch job should be able to handle because normally uh, it is tolerable that max one uh, that one minute um, uh, synchronize into IV for your inbound inventory should be fine. Uh, let yeah. me just add, add one more comment here. So sure. this is the fact, uh, in fact, a future tech talk topic that we are thinking of. We haven't uh, finalized the schedule yet, but we do think there are some uh, need to go into the deep dives of the implementations we did for um, Dynamic 365 Supply Chain Management's connection to inventory visibility, and it could be a uh, session that covers uh, extension points that we have been asked previously by other users and to, there could be some suggestions on writing customized logics, including this uh, forced sync, uh, breaking the one minute um, for uh, for the for your needs. But uh, please stay tuned to our uh, announcements and we'll uh, announce a schedule once we make the decision. Thanks, Jai Cheng. Thanks, Yufi. And the follow-up question to that is like, is there an API limit of using the inventory visibility service? Yeah, um, so for this one, um, for our product itself, we do not put any limit of how many you can or cannot call within a day, for example. Um, but because we are built based on the Power Platform and they, so we are subject to the common API limit provided by the platform. But this limit normally is restricted by the license associated by the license, the product license you purchased. For example, if you purchase the standard uh, SCM license and there is a daily API cap of 20,000 um, per Per day. However, um, if you want, there's another level of licenses which would provide more API uh, API quota for you to call. So basically, um, technically, um, I think at least for inventory visibility products, there's no limit at the moment, and you would need to probably consider evaluate with your sales representative to see how many API calls um, in total you would need for your organization and um, purchase the corresponding uh, license that would provide you the enough uh, API limit by the platform. Thanks, Yufei. And I would just add a few more things to this question. Uh, is there an API limit? So as Yufi mentioned, there is no restriction uh, from the inventory visibility service itself. Uh, but since it has uh, snapshot data and the backup data stored in Dataverse, it makes continuous calls in, in Dataverse to store the backup of the data. So uh, uh, there's a complex calculation going on behind the scene in the architecture, as you see in the architecture diagram, as and when you read the inventory, as and when you uh, post the inventory into the inventory visibility service, it makes those calls to directly to the inventory visibility service, and that doesn't cost any, uh, there is no API limit there. However, uh, as and when the inventory changes into the inventory visibility service, it has to make a backup 
and it has to store the snapshot in the dataverse so it is making a indirect call to dataverse so you might want to consider the dataverse api limits and that's why you should consider testing your load volume into the uat environment to arrive at the right number of uh, apis and if needed uh, if you're going over the api limits you can purchase the add-on uh, uh, as well uh, which will give you more flexibility in terms of uh, going uh, above uh, what your volume uh, uh, is so that's something you can test and 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 figure out uh, next question we have is what is the eta on pre-cached data by site warehouse and item uh, maybe jai cheng you want to take that yeah uh, because this is a feature that we come up recently so I guess it's uh, not on the release map. You say, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I'll say in a few months. But uh, since the question, I can see the uh, question asker is uh, in a anonymous mode, so I don't know who, where the question is from. But please feel free to uh, drop us an email in case you would like to have a preview on that one. Uh, if you want to have a preview on that one, I believe we can get it uh, earlier than the um, to have an earlier trial uh, compared to the official uh, release of this feature. Thanks, Jai Cheng. I think we have all those questions. I think uh, I do want to ask a couple of more questions which are more of a frequently asked question. So the first question is, uh, what is the license cost for inventory visibility service? Maybe you feel you want to explain how the how the inventory visibility service is offered. Right, yes. Um, so uh, thanks, Hiran, for mentioning this. Um, so at the moment, inventory visibility uh, microservice, or let's say actually our full name is inventory visibility adding. It is not a uh, independent or standalone uh, microservice, so it is can either be used as an adding within the Dynamics supply chain management, um, but or it can be included into another Microsoft product called Microsoft Intelligent Order Management product. So uh, since we do not have independent product license, so as long as you hold the license of either of those two products, you will be able to install or enable inventory visibility adding within those two products. And uh, as for the cost, so there's so first of all, the product license, we don't have one and it's included in those two product license. And then as for the API course or the uh, storage, or say let's say data versus storage, um, we it's not charged by us either. So it also same as API uh, core limit. It is uh, it goes with your uh, what's included in your original license. And if it's not enough, you may consider purchase additional license on that. Thank you, Yufei. Uh, another question, probably a frequently asked question is, how can I integrate uh, the third party application? We have seen in the architecture that uh, Dynamics 365 seem as an inbuilt integration with inventory visibility service, but if a customer has other ERP or other WMS uh, systems uh, where they would like to see a single source of inventory, how they can integrate with uh, inventory visibility service. OK, uh, let me take this question. So there are two parts of things uh, to consider in the design phase. So the first thing is that um, in a inventory visibility service, the data is organized by inventory dimension, and you need to a uh, config uh, to make sure that the inventory data uh, lies on the same dimension across different systems. So uh, after you, you uh, after confirming this part, uh, the integration is about to making the API calls like the on, like I explained in Dynamic 365 uh, page to make uh, the on hand changes or to make the inventory uh, summary overrides API call to uh, to sync our data to inventory visibility service directly. 
uh, depends on the actual need, you may also want to make use of sub-reservation allocation and available to promise, uh, but it's a, a case to case uh, basis. And on the other hand, from uh, uh, from the uh, image visibility side, you need to consider the data source um, configuration to denote the data where the data comes from and uh, use the calculated measures to define um, use the calculated measures to define the uh, the logics that you want to enforce uh, for data management across different data sources. Uh, anyway, this will be a topic that we will also be covering in a future tech talk. Uh, an additional note for WMS item, uh, so for warehouse management module, so if you have a more complex, um, a more complex calculation logic inside your own warehouse management module that is not uh, an aggregated, simply aggregate view, nor a logic that is like the dynamic 365 supply chain management one, uh, whether we support it is on the discussion for a case by case basis. You may want to uh, drop email directly to inventory visibility, event visibility supports at Microsoft.com as shown in the current slide uh, to get some information. Yeah, so that's all about this question. Thanks, Jai Cheng. And I'll just add that uh, for any other first party or third party application other than Dynamics 365, SCM or IOM, if you would like to integrate with uh, inventory visibility service, inventory visibility service do expose restful APIs such as read and post through which through these APIs you can integrate uh, other softwares and you can either read the inventory from inventory visibility or you can post the inventory whenever the quantity changes happen in, in these systems so that you can get a single source of uh, truth from the inventory perspective from the inventory visibility service. OK, I think uh, that's all we have in terms of questions. Uh, uh, if you can move to the next slide, Hai Cheng. So these are some of the resources which we have listed for you. Uh, we have a MS Docs uh, page where we have a in-depth uh, articles about the inventory visibility service, all its feature, how you can configure and set up the inventory visibility service. We have also provided some of the postman collections, which are basically uh, different APIs which you can utilize to test. Uh, we have also link for the previous tech talk. Uh, that tech talk also talks about the setup and configuration of inventory visibility service. Uh, if you are thinking of uh, utilizing this service, uh, do join the Yammer group uh, and you can provide your questions. You can, you can provide your feedback and uh, engineering team uh, constantly monitor the Yammer group, the feedback and questions and will be able to respond to your queries. And as always, if you have any ideas uh, which you would like to see into the product, uh, go onto the idea site and submit an idea. And as and when we get more bots, we will prioritize it for our next uh, release. So definitely do check out these resources uh, to get more details. Next. All right, I think that's pretty much it for today's session. Uh, I will hand it over to team now for the closing comments. Thank you, Vera. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. You'll see that at the bottom of the list. We'd love to hear your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation in this survey. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be made available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and to you, our audience, for joining us today. We hope you have a great rest of the day ahead.